the 15th National Assembly's fourth sitting concludes on November 15th. Let's take a look. The closing session saw the participation of top leaders, former leaders of the party, state, and the Vietnam Fatherland Front, among others. On behalf of the National Assembly Standing Committee, National Assembly Chairman Winning Hui gave an overview of the results of the session. Accordingly, at the session, the Parliament completed a large amount of legislative work. It has passed six laws and three resolutions, discussed a number of bills and laws, including the amended law on land, among others. At the session, the National Assembly also ratified the appointment of State Auditor General, Minister of Health, and Minister of Transport. The top legislators suggested Olivers and branches to make efforts to effectively implement social security policies, take care of the material and spiritual life of the people, and prepare conditions for the people to welcome the new year 2023. A business dialogue between Vietnam and New Zealand was held in Hanoi on November 15th with the participation of visiting Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. The dialogue offered a platform for policy makers and businesses of the two countries to discuss investment and business opportunities and promote the bilateral trade. In her remarks, Prime Minister Ardern stressed the important role by enterprises in bolstering cooperation between the two countries, and that the bilateral trade and investment ties have been growing despite challenges induced by the COVID-19 pandemic. The leader said the two sides shared the belief that bilateral trade will hit 2.4 billion USD by 2024, adding the two economies are reciprocal with suitable products like milk, wood and food. According to Minister of Industry and Trade Ngon Hong Dean, the two-way trade tripled over the past decade, and it is still growing strongly. Participating businesses raised proposals to the two governments, focusing on further improving the investment environment in both countries. Ambassador Deng Hoang Zhang, permanent representative of Vietnam to the UN, has stressed the need to give the top priority to ending conflict, restoring peace, and protecting security and safety of civilians and civil infrastructure facilities in Ukraine. Addressing the UN General Assembly's 11th Emergency Special Session on the Ukrainian situation on November 14, Zhang said that the parties involved need to persistently promote dialogues and negotiations to find a long-term peaceful solution to disagreements, on the basis of conformity to and respect for international law and the UN Charter. Having experienced decades-long struggles for national independence and independence protection, Vietnam is deeply aware of the importance of overcoming war consequences to reconstruct the country, maintain sustainable peace and stabilize people's lives, he said. Therefore, he said, Vietnam believes in all conflicts, relevant parties and international partners should make every effort to contribute to the settlement of war consequences, in accordance with international law. Vietnam is a highly important partner in terms of economy, politics and strategy to not only Thailand, but also the entire Southeast Asia. Spokesman of the Thai Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Tani Sengrat, has said in a recent interview granted to the Vietnamese News Agency. Sengrat noted, Thailand is currently the largest trading partner of Vietnam in ASEAN, which in turn is also the former biggest investment destination. Um, Vietnam plays an important role uh, as, as, as an important player, uh, as an important economic player uh, within APEC. So Vietnam has hosted APEC before. So uh, we will we'll work and cooperate closely uh, with uh, our Vietnam and all of our uh, APEC member economies. The Thai diplomat also highlighted the strong social links between the countries, elaborating that there is a large Vietnamese Thai community in Thailand, and many Vietnamese people also used to live in his country. And the same thing in Vietnam. There are, there are also uh, Vietnamese people who used to live in Thailand, and they have uh, very long and um, good ties uh, with Thailand and their families in Thailand. 
So, uh, so already there are great pool of friendship. About the proud space of relations between Vietnam and Thailand, which will mark the 10th anniversary of their strategic partnership next year. He held that the two countries hold enormous cooperation potential. Vietnam is a significant investment destination for his country, Sangrat added. Vietnam targets a spotting fruits worth about $5 billion by 2025 and probably six point five billion by 2030, according to a project recently approved by the Vietnamese Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Accordingly, 14 types of key fruit trees have been chosen for intense cultivation. These include dragon fruit, mango, and banana, among others. By 2025, the total fruit farming area nationwide will reach 1.2 million hectare with an output of 14 million tons. Of which, the 14 kinds of fruits will be grown on 960,000 hectares with an output of around 11 to 12 million tons. The ministry assigned the Plant Protection Department to work with localities to control fruit diseases and instruct growers to build farming area codes. This helps to provide trace origin codes for products, making it easy to expand exports. The General Department of Customs reported that in eight months of this year, dragon fruit was the top currency earner among exported fruits with nearly 463 million USD followed by banana with 237 million USD, and durian, 158 million USD. Given low output and economic efficiency, many cocoa trees were cut down by farmers some years ago and replaced by other crops. Recently, however, growing cocoa has been revived in Bari Abumto province thanks to changing production methods. Mr. Chen Yufong's family in Chiu Duc district has two hectares of cocoa plantations, yielding about 15 tons annually and helping the family earn over 100 million dong. He had previously intended to cut down his cocoa trees as price and output were unstable. But thanks to organic production methods and improved sales, farm stuff with cocoa trees. Cocoa can be evenly harvested for eight to nine months a year. They help ensure a stable income for farmers. Barrier Vũng Tàu has more than 600 hectares of cocoa trees with over 500 hectares in Chiu Duc district, yielding an average output of 2.4 to 3 tons of dry beans per hectare per year. Quality has increasingly improved thanks to modern production processes. Currently, of the more than 600 hectares of cocoa trees in the province, about 400 hectares have been certified for organic production under Japanese standards. Local cocoa enterprises have invested in deep processing and diversified products to cocoa powder, chocolate, and cocoa confectionery. A cocoa park by Nong Farm was recently built in Childuk District, giving visitors the opportunity to experience the cocoa production process. It's quite interesting. This is the first time we have seen where the chocolate we eat every day comes from and how it's made. Demand for cocoa beans in Bari Vungtau province and for export is increasing. The cocoa capital, Chiu Duc, will expand its growing area to 650 hectares by 2025. The potential for cocoa development in Baria Vung Tau is great, as foreign experts have come to invest. We have set an annual goal of continuing to increase the area growing raw cocoa materials. 
We have also focused on connectivity to ensure that all of the cocoa is sold, to help farmers feel secure in production. Cocoa trees have been revived in this land. Products with the Barrier Vũng Tàu brand have also reached high-end markets such as Europe, Japan and the Republic Korea. The fifth International Experimental Theatre Festival is underway from November 15 to 26, featuring 21 plays by domestic and international art troops. In addition to 15 domestic art units in many forms, the festival has also attracted the participation of six international art troops from Italy, the Republic of Korea, Poland, Singapore, Pakistan, and India. The opening ceremony of the festival was held at the Youth Theatre in Hanoi, and the closing ceremony will take place at the Dynam Theatre in the capital. Initially, it was difficult to gather together foreign art troops due to COVID-19 restrictions in some countries, but we had done our best to introduce top art performances to audiences. We want to introduce a play about our great father, late President Ho Chi Minh, to introduce to foreign friends, and we also will stage new experiments. 21 plays will be introduced at venues in Hanoi and Haiphong, including the Youth Theatre, the Dine Arm Theatre, the Workers Theatre, the Army Theatre, the Haiphong August Theatre, the Haiphong Theatre, and the Children's Cultural Palace in Haiphong. As well as plays, six conferences will be held during the festival, assessing the creative values of the plays in particular and the festival in general. The festival offers an opportunity for experts and artists to meet and exchange their experiences and access the essence of theatrical art around the world.